Hey everyone, welcome back to another Mattel Jurassic World review. Today we take a look at the new Camp Cretaceous Soundstrike Triceratops. This figure is part of the last wave of Primal Attack Soundstrikes. It's currently being found at Targets across the US and the retail value is $14.99. So before we crack this figure open, let's just go over the packaging really quick. It comes in the Camp Cretaceous Primal Attack style packaging. You've got your Camp Cretaceous logo up here in the corner, Netflix logo up here, Toro the Carnotaurus and the kids along the front of the box. On the side, we have Bumpy the Baby Ankylosaurus and some of the kids. And then on the back, we have a nice picture of how the Soundstrike action works on this Triceratops. A little cutout for the sticker book and map that comes with all the Camp Cretaceous figures. And then down here in the corner are the other two figures available in this wave grim the baryonyx which was just recently reviewed and the new soundstrike pteranodon which i will not be reviewing because i am not a fan of that mold so enough about that let's crack this figure open and take a closer look so let's start with a nice 360 degree view of this figure now this figure is nothing new it's a straight up repaint of the primal attack soundstrike triceratops that came out a few months ago and this style of mold has been used since the Roar of War line came out when the line first started. Now, normally I don't get too excited for repaints. The Triceratops mold is a particular favorite of mine. I think it's very well done, even though it's way too small to be a Triceratops. But the second I saw the promotional images of this Triceratops, I knew what Mattel was going for. This is a loving homage to the Batat Triceratops, which personally is considered one of the best triceratops figures ever made the main body is almost a maroon color they have some nice turquoise markings that start in the frill they go along the back and then we get to about the midpoint the blue does get a little bit darker it's not such an abrupt change as it does with the green on the back of grim the baryonyx back but i really do love this figure it's hit me right in the nostalgia button so let's just start off with a couple quick measurements. This figure is from the tip of the beak to the tip of the tail, about 12 inches long, and to the top of the hips, just about 4 inches tall. So Triceratops in real life was 26 to 30 feet long. So with those measurements, about put this figure somewhere in the 126 to the 130 scale range. So let's zoom in and take a closer look at some of the finer details on this figure, starting with this beautiful head sculpt. You know, over the years, Mattel has gotten a lot better adding detail to their newer figures. And this Triceratops mold has been around since Fallen Kingdom. And they did a great job with detail right off the bat on this figure. You get a lot of nice scale detail along the frill. You can see all that nice turquoise paint painted in. The knobs along the frill are nicely painted. They painted in an off-white color. Same thing with the brow horns nose horn and the beak and he actually even got some cracks along the brow horn which is a nice touch the eye is painted in yellow with a black pupil and then going down to the feet you can see a lot of nice scale detail a lot of large scales along the body and hind legs none of the toe claws are painted in which is pretty typical of mattel and then along the back you can really see that turquoise blue pattern along here and then we get about the hip region it turns into a darker blue but that really doesn't bug me as much it kind of feels like a natural transition especially when you compare it to grim and then going down to the tail you can see more of that nice scale detail going all the way down to the tip and let's just turn the figure over so you guys can see the scan code for the fax app Moving on to articulation, the articulation is the same for all the other Triceratops figures out there. The front legs can move back a little bit and forwards a little bit. There's a little bit of a hinge to get the legs to swing out just slightly, but it's really not that much movement. The back legs can move forward pretty far and backwards pretty far. There's a very tight, clicky ratchet joint in there to lock the, place, the legs back into a neutral position. And of course, there is the hip pivot to help with stability, which really is an issue because this is a four-legged figure. And since this is a sound strike figure, all you need to do is grab the front legs and rotate the tail to activate its head turning side to side and up and down. And it's pretty much the same sound effects we've been hearing on almost all the electronic Triceratops figures. So let's move on with some comparisons. First up is the only human Camp Cretaceous figure we have so far, Darius. Maybe someday we'll actually see the other kids get the figure treatment. And next up is the Savage Strike Scutosaurus. And next up is this Triceratops Wave Mate Grim, the Baryonyx. And next up are some other Ceratopsians in the line. Here it is with Protoceratops and Styracosaurus. And next up we have the Nasutoceratops. 
and the this was called a Sinoceratops, but it's clearly a Pachyrhinosaurus. And lastly, here it is with the Sinoceratops. And the Sinoceratops, you know, even though they're in the Soundstrike assortment, actually kind of almost dwarfs this Triceratops. I kind of wish Mattel would maybe resculpt the head a little bit bigger and just throw it on this Sinoceratops body just to give us a slightly bigger Triceratops. It still won't be close to the scale I would like it at, but it would definitely be a start. And lastly, here it is with the rest of the Mattel Triceratops. This is the original Roar the dual attack gray blue Triceratops, the dual attack green Triceratops. Here is the new one, and this is a repaint of this green one in the canceled Chaos Effect colors. And I think the only one I'm missing is the Primal Attack Soundstrike Triceratops that came out a few months ago. I absolutely despise the paint scheme on that. I did not like the way the white looked around the frill. But yeah, Mattel is definitely a fan of producing Triceratops figures. I like pretty much, you know, the color schemes on... All these figures, except for the one I mentioned from uh, Primal Attack. But uh, yeah, we definitely need a new, larger Triceratops mold in the future. So final thoughts on this figure. If you're sick of repaints, this figure is an easy pass. Personally, the reason I picked it up for is the color scheme is almost identical to the legendary Betat Triceratops. And that just hit me right in the nostalgia, so I knew this was an instant pickup for me. Even though this mold is a couple years old now, the sculpted in detail is still fantastic on it. It's almost on par with some of the new stuff Mattel is doing. So like I said, if you want another Triceratops for your collection, this is an easy pickup. If you're sick of the repaints, just uh, leave it on the shelf for somebody else. And like I said at the beginning of the review, this figure is currently being found at Targets across the U.S. Retails for $14.99, so that would do it for the review. The only other Jurassic World figure I've left to review is the Massive Biters Albertosaurus. I keep mentioning it in all my reviews. The Beast of the Mesozoic Ceratopsians are coming this week, so if you love Ceratopsians, get ready for a bunch of reviews on those. And as always, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video. Each subscription helps out the channel tremendously, and it's greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys for the next one.